In 1947, I was on my way to the University of Montreal with my grandfather in the car and my father in the car. I said, you know what I want to do? I want to open a school for young children on a farm uh, so they can be happy. And I think that'll be a great thing for me to do in my life's career. And then uh, we searched for property. And then finally, we drove in the driveway of green chimneys. We got 75 acres of land. And by the time I graduated college in May of 1948, we were ready to go and we opened the school. By the time a child comes to Green Chimneys, they have failed academically, behaviorally, or socially. And on average, uh, we know that the children have been hospitalized psychiatrically twice. So these are children that really are at a critical point. All right, comfortable? <laughs> at Green Chimneys, I am lucky enough to be heading the nature-based programs. And what that includes is the Wildlife Center, the horseback riding program, farm animals, dog training, and our two organic gardens. The whole purpose of these programs is to integrate them into the clinical and the educational time of the children in as many different ways as possible. I've been here about five years and I came here after almost 30 years of working in what we call the human-animal bond. This is Hannah. Our occupational therapists, our speech therapists, our uh, mental health professionals, we know how it works and we know how it helps our work here. It just has been so effective. The kids do a lot of interaction work with the smaller horses because it's not just about riding, it's about getting to know the, the horses, interacting with them, and, and just to have a little horse come up on their own will to interact with you. You know, for a child, that's really amazing because it's relationship that's being created and the animal is doing that, the animal is participating in that. The wildlife area is, is very um, popular with some kids. They, they gravitate towards the wild things because for some reason they connect more with that idea of something that lives in the woods that is wild, not a, a domestic animal. Wild things don't need names, unlike domesticated animals. So this idea that it's the owl, the eagle, and, and not some made-up name, it's, it's, it's subtle, but, but it really makes an impact. You can never predict which child will gravitate towards which animal. The kids will prove you wrong every time, and so will the animals. You know, I, I think so much of this is emotional, intuitive, supportive, subtle. I really think it's the acceptance of the animal, it's the presence, it's being in nature, being outside. I think that's where the moments of success really happen. For most of our children, the presence of the animals sets a tone for the program. The animals are very happy to be caressed and taken care of and petted. And I think that the children get the idea that here they are in a leadership role, that they can really impact the life of that animal. The teenagers work and train our service dogs. We start setting goals very early in the class. This puppy, by the time December rolls around, has to know 35 commands. So by the child seeing how the dog learns, it helps them to calm themselves down and become better teachers. And that, that becomes very instrumental in the child's learning down the road. Uh, they have to learn how to control their gut instinct. When uh, you're getting frustrated, um, the dog is going to feel this frustration and will react a certain way to it. So the kid, if he wants to be able to train a dog, will have to control all this emotion to receive a response from the dog who is acceptable. The kids learn how to control all these emotions. I hope the animals bring to them a sense of belonging, a sense of responsibility in caring for them, and that as they care for them, they realize that the animals also return this through love and attention to them. And they're learning the skills of becoming parents themselves and being future citizens. I think the animals bring that to them. In 1995, 
There was a TV segment、um, aired in Japan that was on、um, green chimneys. And it was a story about a child who was attached to the animal and how animals heal the child. And when I saw it, I had to quit my job in Japan, apply for an internship, and then I moved here in 1997. I came here the first day. I was told to walk a horse. I've never walked a horse before. And the first day, I walked a couple horses, met a couple kids. I just thought this was just the best thing in the world that I've ever done. Green Chimneys has about 650 great people who work in all of our different programs. And most of them are drawn to Green Chimneys because they sincerely want to do something good in their life. They want to contribute. Joe has been here many, many years. This is Pete, one of our volunteers. Paul, it's Pauline、okay. and Susan. When you come here, your interest is focused bigger than it might have been where you came from. It's all centered around the children and the animals. Every animal has a story who comes to Green Chimneys. He is、um, a llama that actually was trained to be a therapy animal. And、uh, both him and Lily go into nursing homes and、uh, they're, they're actually trained to kiss people. <laughs>、um, we get a lot of animals from animal care and control, from humane societies. And、uh, we try to sort of see if the animal fits into our program. We're unfortunately not a limitless animal shelter, so we get way more animals offered to us than we can take in. But if the animal kind of fits into the program, it has a home for life. The first thing that students do when they come back to visit, no matter how old they are, they head up to the barn to see the animals. And many times they ask, Where is a particular animal? And they're really surprised to see that the animal is still living a, a good life. I got a phone call from a young man who said he was in medical school and he had been a Green Chimney student. And then he sort of talked about a sheep that he worked with when he was a student here. And he said, You know, Hazel was the greatest, but I'm sure she died a long time ago.、And、I right away said, Hazel, black and white sheep, and her, that sheep is still here. And he was totally emotional. And what that really showed is the, the strong connection that these animals have on the kids. And when he came for a visit the week after, you know, he couldn't remember the names of his teachers, his therapists, he barely knew any of the people. But it was the sheep that he remembered. Animals never judge you and never think about your story. They have no clue what you happened before. It's all about now. How do you react and how do you feel right now? They don't lie. <laughs> you know, like every day, the kids taught me something different, horses taught me something different. So, you know, like every day I learned something, and every day right now, I'm still learning something. You know, so many of the children today grow up in shopping malls, they grow up on the computer, playing video games, and unfortunately have so little access to the natural world. So, just here, having them experience the seasons and taking care of the animals and learning that nature takes time and that instant gratification isn't part of growing a tomato. You know, you need to wait months.、Um, th those are the lessons that frame their time at Green Chimneys, and our staff actually benefits from that too. My, my hope for the future is that we will be able to export this idea to both the public schools and to private schools and to children's homes throughout the world. You don't have to have the extensive animal collection that we have, but you can get some kind of an animal program going. Children like animals, and what we want to do is build up on that and、uh, make sure that they understand why the animals need their care. The rehabilitation of the birds is an important part of our program. That's wildlife. What happens is that as the bird is ready to be released and a child is ready to go home, the child releases the bird with the staff, and we all wish the bird well that he will be able to sustain himself in the wild. And at the same time, we're saying that you will do well and that you'll have the strength to、uh, continue and be a wholesome adult. Good morning. Good morning. You getting treated nicely?